Okay, how does a load sensing control works? Video by Edgar Lindo. Okay, so we have a variable displacement pump and we have a load sensing control on the top and a pressure compensated control on the bottom. Uh, the pressure compensated control uh, has a heavier spring. It limits uh, the flow to maximum system pressure. Uh, this time, uh, for reason of this example, we're going to say it's 3000 PSI. Uh, the resistance of this spring is going to be 3000 PSI, and that is going to be the maximum system pressure. Now, this is, is the load sensing valve. The load sensing valve has a, a smaller spring uh, with less resistance. It can be 200, 300 PSI. Uh, for this example, we're going to leave it at 200 PSI, and we're going to say the resistance of the spring for the load sensing valve is going to be 200 PSI. Now, uh, we can change the displacement of this, uh, of this pump under maximum system condition, maximum pressure system condition at 3000 PSI. But we can also de-stroke or, or completely um, reduce the displacement of this pump to zero by using the load sensing control, a, a pressure that is much lower than the 3000 PSI. Uh, because instead of beating the spring, we are gonna worry about beating the resistance of the spring of the load sensing valve, which is only 200 PSI. So you can lower the displacement of the pump at 200 PSI instead of um, maximum system pressure, which is 3000 PSI. So how do we do that, right? So we have, a, let's say, a system over here. We have a, a cylinder, uh, which is under load. Uh, let's say this needle valve, it open and closes. Uh, let's say this all the way open as it is right now. And let's say the cylinder start, start moving and start creating load. And let's say it creates 1,000 PSI. And then it goes up to 2,000 PSI, up to, up to 3,000 PSI. When it goes to 1,000 PSI, the 1,000 PSI is also being, being sensed through the load sensing line, which is creating which is forcing this valve to stay open. So the, the load uh, coming from, from the system of 1,000 PSI to 1,000 PSI, whatever, whatever the load, whatever the pressure the load is creating is coming through this line and trying to keep the valve open. In addition to that load, it also, you, you add the 200 PSI resistance of the spring. So you have system under pressure plus the 200 PSI. Now, also, uh, the pressure is being sensed this way. It comes through this line. It comes through this line through, through this valve, and it comes to this line to this valve. Uh, at this side of the, um, on, on this other side of the pressure line, you have this valve. Let's say it is open. It's minimum pressure. Let's say 5 PSI pressure drop when the valve is all the way open. And so you have 1,000 PSI plus 5 PSI over here. So you have 1,005 PSI, and on this side you have 1,200 PSI. And if pressure goes up, it goes up to 2,000 PSI, then you have 2,200, and on this side you have 2,005 PSI, right? And so you have more pressure on this side of the valve to keep it open, and it's not able to shift it, because the load is helping the spring to keep it open. Now, on this other valve, however, the pressure compensated valve, it doesn't have the load sensing line to help it keep it open. The only, the only thing that keeps this valve open is gonna be the 3000 PSI spring. So when you have enough pressure coming from the load through this line, and when this line reached the 3000 PSI over here, now it has enough force to shift the valve, move, shift the valve in this direction, allow flow to, co to come through the cylinder, cylinder extend, and it lowers the displacement of the pump to zero under maximum system pressure. Now, if we want to do it at 200 PSI instead of 3000 PSI, what we need to do, let's say uh, the cylinder is in standby. There's no pressure on this line. You need to reduce the pressure on this line 
when when the system is just on standby, it's not moving. There's no load pressure coming in, so there's no, there's nothing. There's there's minimum pressure in this line. So when it's minimum pressure in this line, now you only have to be the two two hundred psi from the spring. In order to be the two hundred psi of the spring, you can start closing this valve over here. When you close this valve enough, or you close it all the way down, you have you. You, you can reach 200 PSI, 200 PSI does not beat the 3000 PSI over here, but 200 PSI beats the resistance of, uh, of the spring of the load sensing valve. So at 200 PSI, this valve shift, there's flow coming through the port, goes to the cylinder, and it reduces the displacement of the pump to zero under uh, 200 PSI. And that, and that is how a load sensing control works. <laughs> now, let's replace this, this valve over here. Let's replace it uh, with a directional control valve and see how that works uh, with the cylinder. So under this condition, let's say that this line is not there. It doesn't exist. This line is gone. And this line is gone over here. Uh, the pressure goes to the pressure port of the valve. And the load sensing line goes to the pressure line to extend the cylinder. So the system uh, is uh, the valve is centered. Uh, in in this condition, the cylinder is not moving. There is no pressure in this line. Uh, the pump wants to pump oil, but it reaches uh, the valve which is closed. So the pressure uh, rise in this line up to 200 psi uh, it cannot be 3000 psi over here it has to go to the path of least resistance which is this spring over here set at 200 psi so when it reaches 200 psi the valve shift oil comes through the cylinder moves the mechanism the displacement of the pump to zero and it shuts the pump down at 200 psi there's not no pumping going through the through the pressure line it only holds uh, the 200 psi pressure and the pump in the sta is in standby at that moment. Now let's say you want to move the cylinder and you want to move a load on the cylinder. Now you start opening this valve, you start shifting it. When you start shifting this valve, it's like opening this needle valve over here. You start shifting this valve and now flow, you start allowing flow to go through through the port to extend the cylinder when you open the valve you start moving the valve you start opening the knee it's like opening the needle valve you start lowering the pressure to less than 200 psi so this valve this this uh this spring start pushing it says oh you have less pressure over here so i can use my 200 psi to start pushing this way again and then when you have flow coming through this cylinder or, or flow coming through this line to extend the cylinder, it also says, sends the flow over here. And now this flow start pushing, it start helping that, that spring and it start pushing the valve even more on this direction. And when you open it more and more, you lower, lower uh, the resistance on this side until the full uh, spring takes over until the full pressure of the load sensing valve helps it to keep it open. And so you extend the cylinder and the cylinder is extending. And once again, you, you, you raise pressure on this line, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 PSI. And the same thing comes this way. Pressure comes in here. They both cancel each other, pushing uh, against the, the valve plus the 200 PSI that keeps the valve open. Again, it reaches the 3,000 PSI of, of the pressure compensated valve. It moves the cylinder and it shuts the 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 pump down at 3,000 psi maximum system pressure. Now let's say that you want this flow from the pump, but you don't want a hundred percent of the flow. Maybe you want 50 percent of the flow of the pump, right? So in order for for you to get 50 percent of the flow, uh, you have to position this valve just open enough to create a, enough resistance to start shifting this valve over, to start creating uh, 
that resistance to be the 200 PSI of the spring over here. Uh, the load is not going to help you beat the spring because the load comes in this way and it comes in this way, it cancel each other, and it, it, it doesn't help you against the spring. In order to beat the spring, you have to decrease the opening of this valve, open or close the valve over here, and reduce or increase the resistance to beat the spring. So if you increase the, res the resistance just enough to start making shift this valve, you can create some pressure coming through the cylinder just enough to shift the, the, the displacement halfway. You say, yeah, I want it like 50% or I want it 75%. You can create just enough pressure with the opening of the valve to keep it at mid-stroke. Now, you're moving uh, the, the load at mid-stroke, let's say half the velocity. And now you have a variable load. You're, you're moving half the velocity, but you have a, a variable load that gives you 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 PSI. Under the variable load, this, this valve is still going to be it's still going to be in the same position because it doesn't matter what the load is going to be on this side. It doesn't matter what the pressure is in this line or this line. If you keep the orifice, if you keep the opening of the valve the same, the spring is not going to, is, is not going to, is not going to move. It's not going to move and you're not going to open or close this valve. So you, what you have is a constant flow constant flow on their variable um, on their variable pressure or on their variable loads uh, uh, at the at the cylinder and that is uh, also uh, one of the features of the load sensing control that it, it allows you constant flow on their variable load and the reason the the reason that you can do that is by having uh, some people say the, the same pressure drop against the uh, uh, pressure on this side and on this side on the valve, uh, but uh, if you keep a, a fixed uh, orifice uh, during that condition, you're not going to move that spring, and it's going to and the pump is going to give you the same flow because the cylinder does not change position. Now another thing that you can do with the uh, load sensing control is that the pump is able to give you the same flow on their variable speeds. Let's say the, the pump uh, is connected to, uh, uh, to a power takeoff, right? Uh, usually electric motors, if you have an electric motor, the electric motor, motor has a more even uh, RPM. Let's say the 750, 1800 RPM. It's a more stable RPM. Uh, but when you connect it, uh, to uh, uh, to an engine and you connect it to a power takeoff, the engine often does not have uh, the same uh, stable RPM to drive the pump. So you have variable uh, speeds on the RPM of the shaft to deliver flow. Uh, with a pressure, uh, with a load sensing control, you also have the ability to maintain the flow even though the RPM of the pump is 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 uh, is variable. And uh, now one uh, how the, how's that accomplished is that for example you have the pump again at a 50% displacement. Uh, the pump is pumping 50% of the oil going through the through going through the valve moving the cylinder. And all of a sudden the RPM drive from 1800 let's say to, to 1500 RPM, right? It, it has a drop of the RPM. When the RPM drops on the pump, uh, uh, same displacement, lower RPM means less flow, right? Or in, and also less pressure because you're trying to, to put less, less, uh, less, less flow through, the, through a fixed orifice. When you have less pressure, immediately, immediately this, this spring over here said, hey, you know what? You, you are pushing with less force. That means, once again, I can use my 200 PSI to push this valve forward in this direction. And when you start closing the valve in this direction, then you are choking the flow coming through the cylinder and, and, and the pressure coming through the cylinder. You know, just enough that, that the cylinder said, hey, I don't have much force to push in this direction anymore. 
Now this cylinder is taking over, this pressure is taking over, and it push in the other direction, and it, it opens the displacement of the pump a little bit more. And so you have a pump that reduces the displace, it reduces the velocity, it reduces the RPM, but opens up the displacement, and when you open the displacement and you reduce the velocity of the RPM, it come out to be the same flow. It comes to deliver the same flow that it was delivering before, and it creates that, that pressure on this line again, and it regulates this valve back into position, and it lags to a lower RPM to the same uh, a lower RPM to a higher displacement that delivers the same uh, the same flow. Now, if if we do it the other way around and we say all of the sudden go from 1800 RPM to let's say to 2100 RPM, then you have more you you tend to have more flow to create more resistance on this line. And when you are creating more resistance on this line, then you are closing this valve a little bit more, and then you are giving a little bit more pressure on this cylinder and you are closing the displacement of the pump a little bit more and so you have higher RPM, lower displacement, but the pump ends, ends up delivering the same flow. And so you have uh, a variable RPM under variable conditions RPM, you still deliver the same flow from the pump. And that is another feature of the load sensing control uh, which if you have a, a shaft uh, connected to a to a power takeoff and you have a variation on the RPM, you can still deliver the same flow to the system. And so uh, that's what a load sensing does. So it, it gives uh, same flow on their variable uh, on their variable loads. It gives same flow on their variable RPMs of the pump. It can lower. Uh, the PSI, uh, it can shut down uh, the displacement of the pump at 200 PSI and it doesn't have to go uh, to 3000 PSI to, to shut the pump or to control the displacement of the pump. So anyway, uh, that is uh, the video for today. Uh, thank you for your attention and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.